adventure bike. Enduro. Hmm. Adventure bike. Enduro. Huh. What's the difference between the two? We're going to get into it. We're going to talk about it on the Rant and Ride. Look what happened. I woke up in a big old pound of money. Hey, all you KTM guys, come on. I'm Team Warren. Don't think I'm coming down on the I, on the other hand, and you on the other hand, and a lot of people on the other hand. So why don't we have a 450? a lot of ice. But here's my thinking. Hey guys, Joe here, 690 v 690 Garage, 690 ADV.com. We're back. BMW F800 GSA. A stands for adventure. This is an adventure touring motorcycle. And as you saw in the beginning, we had the GSA and we had the 690 Enduro. What are the differences between the two? Some people know, some people really don't. What is the difference between an adventure touring motorcycle and an Enduro? Well, an Enduro, when they build it, the dirt is in mine first. That's strictly it. They build it for the dirt, and then they find, what do we got to do to get this thing street legal? That is an Enduro, a real Enduro. Adventure Series bikes are different. They build them for the street, and then they build the dirt after. And then once they do that, they're like, what can we do to make this the best it possibly can be on the street? But yet, you can still get off-road, which makes it a dual-purpose bike or dual-sport bike. So, these adventure bikes are, th this is the creme to the creme. I mean, it is. This is the pinnacle. This is, the, this is probably the most sought-after of all the 800, 700 series-type adventure touring bikes. Why? Look at it. It's freaking gorgeous, man. It's just gorgeous. Here's the downside. She's a pig. <laughs> she's, she's not light. She's not like the 690. This bike is sitting right now at about 515 pounds. Now, there are aftermarket parts on here. Tour Tech, yeah, spare no expense, right? Very expensive. That's like 600, almost 700 dollars for a crash guard. Why do you do it? Because this plastic, <laughs> you gotta sell your children to replace it. It's very, very expensive. Then you got the skid plate. We built these bikes out so that they can do what the Enduro bikes will do, but on the road, Boy, you've got Cadillac right here. Total Cadillac. So, but the thing is, they're built just a little bit differently. The Enduros are definitely not as comfortable on the road, whereas the Adventure Tours are really made for the road. They're basically, as I'd like to say, 70% road, 30% dirt. Very similar to tires. Enduros are 30% road, 70% dirt. They really have their home in the dirt, and these really guys, these guys here really have their part on the road, and they're super, super comfortable. And if you look, it, it's like riding on a spaceship. Look at all these gadgets, and all these gadgets are for comfort. It's for riding. It's for touring. It's for punching miles. This bike, 500 miles in a day, no problemo. This seat, it is not a seat concept. It is BMW's factory seat. Super comfy. It is memory foam. It's super, super nice. So, with this bike here, yes, on the road, she'll do it, and she'll do it easily, super, super easily. You got the nice big battle shield up here in the front. Most people are like, oh, man, it's in your way. No, actually, it's not. When you're riding, it's really, it's nice, it's perfect. Gets all that air up over you. So, this is the adventure bike. There's two different series. You have the GS and then the GSA. GS is a lot more slender, but it also carries two less gallons of fuel. This bike, for what it is, is, in my opinion, this is my opinion, the king. This is the king of them all. I think this bike beats the 1200s, and it beats anything in an 800 class category. She sips juice, and she will just go, 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 go. And let's get on and let's ride a little bit. Let's ran a little bit, and let's go into basically what this does. And we'll talk about the other bikes as well and what they do. But the adventure bikes are basically, these are street bikes, guys. They're street bikes that will go in the dirt. And guess what? Twin cylinder. Listen to how quiet it is. Listen to that. Just nice and smooth. She just purrs like a kitten. Make sure there's no monkeys coming. But if you notice, I mean, she's got a 21-inch front. She's got a 17-inch rear. And she just rides like a gem. I mean, this is literal. This is almost as nice as riding in a car, okay? And you can get these in all flavors. You can get them all decked out. This one is mine, personally. It's completely loaded out. It is just 
you can't beat it. Heated grips, electronic suspension, uh, I mean, you name it, it's got it on here. And you can get them in all, like I said, in the 1200 series, KTM has theirs in the 1090 series. We had one on our trip last year, beautiful, gorgeous bike. And just did great on the road. It just did magnificently. And it did really good off-road. But that's where you get to just put everything in when it comes down to the enduro size. I don't know what that person's doing. Uh, off-road, <laughs> nothing touched the 690. The 690 just, it was hands down, it was king. But on the highway, uh, you know what, they won, they won. I could do what they could do, but they definitely were more comfortable than I was. But these adventure tour bikes, that's what they are. So if you are getting into dual sporting, or if you are thinking about doing an upgrade or anything like that, and you're like, well, you know, I don't really know which bike I wanna get. Do I, if you already own an Enduro, what adventure touring bike would you think about getting? Which one do you, you know, would you prefer? Here's the deal. When you start going in the classifications in these adventure bikes, you want to basically figure out what kind of, you know, creature comforts do you want? You know, the BMW, man, spare no expense. These things are just bang up comfy. I mean, they are so, so nice. They are just super, super nice. But that comes at a cost. This bike right here, MSRP, I think is right at $15,000. Then you start adding all your particles and stuff, now you're at $18,000. 690 Enduro, not cheap, you're at 107. And then you can go up from there on your Enduro. Um, there's only so many Enduro bikes that are out there that are street legal. The only two that I would really suggest in the Enduro category to actually get on and compete against something like this that you could do miles would be a 701 or a 690. Everything else is gonna be basically low uh, CC. It's gonna do okay, uh, but it's really gonna be a true dirt bike when you get below that. The 500s, 450s, anything like that. Especially that new CRF that we don't know anything about. I got a video on it. Uh, but um, that's gonna be, from what we understand and we don't know, will probably be an enduro bike. So, um, but back to these bikes and the difference is, I mean, this is just a twin. Now a twin, it disperses the, 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 the energy or the vibration to where there really is almost none. I mean, there's almost none. I mean, there, you don't get any really any fatigue in your hands. You don't get the numbness like you do in the thumpers or the single cylinders. Um, and they're just a joy on the highway. These things are straight up a joy on the highway. So um, doing 40, 50 miles, joke, 100 miles, joke you know 200 mile days are a piece of cake on a bike like this um, plus the other thing that's different between this and the enduros is what it's capable of packing what can this bike pack uh, a lot more than an enduro bike that's for sure and you can pack down an enduro bike but here's the deal with enduros the more you pack them the more lighter they get in the front end the harder they are to ride on the road these bikes here are just set up. This bike, as it is, is 515 pounds. That's what the suggested weight is, or what they say it is, or claimed weight. And then the GS, I think, is like 18 to 20 pounds lighter than this. But it's skinnier, and it has two less gallons of fuel on there. So, but when you start getting into these, the difference is, is they're usually twin cylinder bikes. So they're gonna be heavier. There's just more engine there, and it's heavier. You know, Enduros are usually going to be somewhere around that low 300, and then your basically adventure bikes, they don't even really start getting started till about 450 to 470 pounds, and then man, they get all the way up to the 570 when you start getting into like say the Yamaha, that Super Tenere. Very heavy, and they don't get heavy until you take them off road and you lay one down. That's when they get real interesting because they're super, super, super heavy. So, but if you're thinking about getting into the sport and you're thinking about what am I wanting to do, if you are a dirt guy, you probably want to, I mean, if you're going to be doing a lot of dirt, you definitely want to be thinking about an enduro. That's really what you want to do. Some type of an enduro type bike. And it doesn't have to be a 690. I mean, you really could get away. They're not really enduros. Uh, you know, like your 250s uh, and stuff like that. But 
you can actually get away with something like that. But I would suggest the higher CC just because they're going to be a lot more better if you've got to get on the highway and you've got to burn some miles. So, but with that being said, if your heart is in the dirt, think enduro. Just think enduro. But keep in mind, the street is going to be work, okay? But off road, yeah, there's not going to be a lot of people keeping up with you unless they got an enduro bike like yours. But if you want to travel and you want to see, you know, the sights and you're thinking a little bit of dirt, now make no mistake, I've had this bike up Cinnamon Pass, I've had it up on some pretty sketchy, uh, you know, canyon roads and some slot canyons. Um, it's work, make no mistake. You can do it, but it is work. Keep in mind, you're going to work this bike. It is going to work and you're going to be really, really tired at the end of the day, whereas an enduro, uh, you're going to have a good time, you're not going to be death gripping that sucker, and you're going to be way enjoying the off-road a whole lot more. So, but if you're sightseeing, and you want to maybe two up or something on the back, uh, like, like your girl or something like that, this is something you want to look at, you know, like an 800 or a, a 1200 or a 1090, and I mean, I'll tell you what, you can pack a ton of stuff on these things, these things are workhorses, and you can zip 80, 90 miles an hour down the road, and she'll do it just like it's nothing. Like it is nothing. So, if you're thinking about these two different types of bikes, that's really where you need to put your mindset. Where is your heart? Where's your heart at? Where do you want to be? Do you want to be on the road most of the time? Do you want to be in the dirt most of the time? And that's really where you need to gauge uh, where you're going to buy your bike you know, or what kind of bike you want. And some guys are very fortunate and they have both. <laughs> so you can be very, very lucky. And if you know you're gonna be punching down a lot of road miles with a little bit of dirt, you can just, just hop on your bad boy right here. Meow, and you're gone, man. You just enjoy the ride. But if you're not that fortunate and you wanna hit the road and you're not gonna do much dirt, then you just buy one of these bikes and it's perfect, man. And they don't lose value. And they are just a joy to ride. They are such a joy to ride. They are so much fun. If you've never ridden one, here's the deal. If you can find a BMW ride day or something like that, go out and go ride one. Or even KTM. Or anybody that will allow you to ride one of these twins and you can test them out to see you know, if you like it or not. Because make no mistake, they come at a cost. They're not cheap. But if you are going to go and you're going to tour, like say you're going on a five 8,000 mile trip and say out of that five to 8,000, 60 to 70% of it is going to be this, asphalt, concrete, but there's gonna be some off-road adventures. Man, I, I wouldn't hesitate in a second to ride anything other than something like a BMW. And I'm not trying to promote the BMW. This is just a fantastic bike. I just happen to have one. I'm just saying for adventure touring bikes, just remember, adventure touring bikes mean road. They mean road, and then they mean after road, they will go in the dirt. They will. They'll actually go in the dirt. So, with that being said, if you want to be in the dirt and go on the road some, then basically what you want to do is you want to look at an enduro. And you can either trailer the bike, or you can, that was a double popo right there. Uh, you can even ride them too, man. There's some guys, even on Enduros, man, they do huge trips on those things. But just remember what the two are and know what the differences are. Off-road, Enduro, way fun. On-road, long haul, tough. Adventure touring bike, on-road, absolute awesome. And then when you get off-road, it depends on what type of off-road you do, is going to dictate whether you have a good day or you're having a bad day. So anybody that watches YouTube videos and they see the promotions for these bikes, whether it's a 1090 from KTM or an 800 from BMW or any of these adventure bikes, and you're seeing them doing wheelies and they're sliding and they're drifting and they're doing all that stuff going up these gigantic rock hills, doing all that stuff, keep in mind, professional rider, it gets you excited, I know, because I watch those videos too and it gets me excited as well. Same thing with the KTM Enduro bikes too. Professional riders, they get paid, that's what they do, and it makes you feel like you can do that stuff, but the odds are mm, the general public's not going to be able to do that stuff. So keep that in mind whenever you're looking at these bikes and whatever you know your choice is and whatever you're doing. But the BMW F800 GSA, ah, fantastic. That's why I bought one. It's a great bike. Also, I have a KTM too, so I have the best of both worlds. So it's kind of nice 
and I'm a little bit spoiled. But at the end of the day, I work hard, I get to play hard. So, but these bikes here are just fantastic. They are just super fantastic. And they can charge basically a small city. <laughs> They're not like Enduros where you can only have so many connection points and stuff just because of the small battery that it has and then the stator that's in them are not as nearly as big as these. They don't pull the K watts like these do. Um, but they're awesome. Heated grips, adjustable suspension, hazards, uh, different ride modes. You can put it in enduro, you can put it in comfort mode. I mean, there's just all these different things you can do with this. An enduro bike, get on it and ride it. That's it. That's all you're going to get. Have a great day. There's not much you can do. At best, you can turn your ABS off. That's it. So just understand what that is right there. But if you have a dual sport adventure bike or an enduro bike and you have any input to give to people and let them know uh, what you feel is a great choice, comment section, man. Put it in there. Slap it up. Let's talk about it. Let's get into it. Let's talk about what your thoughts are on these bikes and it doesn't have to be BMW it just happens to be the bike that I'm riding I mean I'm not biased to any bike I love them all man because that's what it's all about get out go ride have fun your adventure if it's going down to the grocery store if that's all you can do go do it man get out and get some and have a great time but that's really the differences between your Enduros and your adventure bikes is that basically they're really two different animals and know what those two animals are before you go out and spend your money and they go, you know what, I bought an Enduro and I really should have bought an adventure bike. Or you go out and buy an adventure bike and go, man, I really should have bought an Enduro. So just know what those two differences are and then you should come out on top. You win either way. It just depends on how much you want to do of either or, street or dirt. Anyway, my name's Joe, 690ADB, 690Garage, 690ADB.com. Log on, get your stickers. We're sending them out. We got some going out every week to people. And uh, log in and get some, man. And we appreciate everybody coming in, comments, subscribers, everything. We're growing. Thank you so much. And I just appreciate you like you just have no idea. We're back. And I hope you all know the difference now and that you potentially will have a decision on what you think you want or don't want. So... Have a great day. I appreciate you. And 690.